So hi everyone, um, my name's Meg and I'm going to talk to you about my project which is called Redox Regulation of Signalling. Firstly I'm going to tell you how I came to be a biochemist. So in my year 12 at high school um, I was sponsored by my lo local Rotary Club to attend what's informally known as Geek Camp, which some of you may have heard of. It's three weeks at Auckland University, um, along with 160 other students, getting a broad introduction to a range of sciences. And it was here that I discovered that biology was quite interesting. And so I went away and I swapped out of Year 13 History and into Year 13 Biology. Um, but unfortunately, the course didn't really interest me at all. And so when I left high school, I was adamant that I was going to study uh, a Bachelor of Science majoring in Chemistry and a Bachelor of Commerce majoring in Economics. But first I headed overseas to do a gap year, I was only 17 when I left school, um, so I went to the UK and worked at a school over there and it was here that I applied for university and so being on the other side of the world wasn't the easiest process. Um, so I applied for Massey University in Palmerston North, um, that's close to where I'm from, and also on a complete whim decided why not apply for Otago? Um, and the way that I picked all of my papers was to read through the course outline for everything because I had no idea how university worked or anything like that. And so when I first came, I had everything from maths, business statistics, finance, economics, chemistry and physics in my first year paper lineup. And so it was first, first semester chemistry, Chem 191, um, which is a health science paper that Wayne Patrick gave a really cool lecture about enzymes and it was an introductory lecture to biochemistry and I thought wow that's what I want to do. So I swapped out of physics and into biochemistry and here I am two months into my PhD still smiling um, <laughs> and very much loving it. <coughs> so a little bit about my project. Um, it centres all around these basic oxidation and reduction reactions which the chemistry teachers in the room will be very familiar with. So an oxidation is a loss of electrons and a reduction reaction is a gain of electrons and these two happen simultaneously. So an example of a reduction reaction would be this molecule here, hydrogen peroxide or H2O2 being reduced to water and the subsequent oxidation might be a protein being oxidised and don't worry too much about the terminology there. So my project is all based around hydrogen peroxide or H2O2. And you guys probably think of that as hair dye or bleach, but it's actually produced in our cells all the time. And it is, plays a role <coughs> in cell signalling. So if we take, this is my way of thinking about cell signalling as an electronic circuit. So normally you have a switch which shuts and your signals transduce through the circuit and you might get your light turning on. In the case of a cell, you get a molecule turning on the receptor and you get signal transduction by what I'm choosing to call effector molecules today and then you get a signal change. So it might be something as simple as a change in gene expression, which might lead to something like cell growth or cell death, something like that. So we know that hydrogen peroxide acts as one of these effector molecules, but how it does that is what I'm trying to answer because <coughs> there is an enzyme called peroxyredoxin, which basically eats up all of the hydrogen peroxide in our cells as soon as it's produced. And so how can hydrogen peroxide act in this pathway if it's pretty much destroyed the second it's produced? Um, so we've come up with two models to sort of answer this question. The first I like to think of is an obstruction in rugby. So take that enzyme peroxyredoxin, this player here, um, which I said basically uses up all our hydrogen peroxide straight away. And if we could inactivate it, it would allow hydrogen peroxide to get away and pass the ball or pass on that signal. So the way we might inactivate it is through something like a protein modification. And so a genuine example of this happening in our cells would you get a protein modification of peroxyredoxin and then hydrogen peroxide is able to signal and that leads to cell cycle progressing. So those of you who talk about mitosis, an example of this is when hydrogen peroxide signals to allow mitosis to continue occurring, which will allow your cells to divide. So that's the first model. The second model you can think of as a relay. So you get a molecule turning on a receptor, your hydrogen peroxide is produced, it oxidises the peroxyredoxin enzyme I was talking about, and then that is what oxidises your target protein. 
And so again, we have an example of this in our cells, um, which was actually discovered by my supervisor in her lab in 2012, where the target protein is called ASK1, and basically when that gets oxidized by this peroxyredoxin, it leads to cell death. So it activates a whole signaling pathway that leads to cell death. And the way that it does that is by modifying proteins. So I've talked about modifying proteins a lot, and that's the approach that I'm going to use to work out um, what the role of hydrogen peroxide is. And so we've got this mass spectrometry, which is just a fancy technique for measuring these protein modifications. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some normal cells, and then some cells with none of that peroxyredoxin enzyme, and treat them with hydrogen peroxide, and I'm going to use mass spec to look at what the protein modifications are, and then work backwards up the pathway to try and work out where hydrogen peroxide is acting in the pathway. And that was how to do it.